Item number SCP-5091 Object Class Keter Special Containment Procedures SCP-5091 is to be contained at Area 79 within a containment vault 100 meters below the surface level. SCP-5091 is to be placed in the center of this vault with 30 high-intensity spotlights arranged in a 1-meter circular pattern above, below, and around it. Once every month, the spotlights are to be replaced by D-Class personnel due to the damage caused by SCP-1591's effect. An equivalent set of spotlights are to be kept in position outside the vault in case of containment procedures failing or being enacted incorrectly. An RD team headquartered within Area 79 is completely dedicated to developing and engineering the increasingly advanced containment light mechanisms and maintaining the electrical infrastructure necessary to continue SCP-5091's containment. Materials from scp Beep have been implemented as part of the research and use of other objects is under consideration. Photosensitive Broadcasting units are to be set up above, below, and around a vault to monitor for a containment breach. If any photosensitive broadcasting unit cease to function, service teams are to prepare 75 high-intensity spotlights with an intensity 600,000 lux greater than SCP-1591's intensity to cease the expansion of SCP-1591's effect. In the event that the containment is breached, O5 Command is to be alerted to the possibility of an XK-class end-of-the-world scenario. Description SCP-1591 is a glass sculpture in the shape of a star, surrounded by 14 sheets of stained glass. The central sculpture weighs 1.2 kilograms, with the individual panels weighing 12 kilograms each. All components of SCP-1591 are suspended approximately 6 meters above the ground through an as yet unknown mechanism. To date, efforts to affect the levitation of either the sculpture or the panels have been unsuccessful. SCP-5091 constantly produces light with gradually increasing brightness and intensity. Currently, 10,230,450 lux. Any surface illuminated by SCP-5091 will appear to become inconsistently transparent, and if not removed, any affected matter will disappear from observable space. Non-sonic matter that makes contact with light produced by SCP-5091 will begin to rapidly decrease in temperature until it takes on a solid form. SCP-5091 is immune to its own effects. Organisms will retain consciousness and mobility while being affected by SCP-5091, although the ability to create speech will be lost. Affected organisms will usually react in a panic manner, attempting to flee from SCP-1591's light as quickly as possible. If an affected organism ceases being exposed to SCP-1591's light, it will quickly fade and vanish. Further research of this effect has been inhibited by the continued destruction of observational equipment. SCP-5091 being exposed to light with a greater intensity than its own will cause the rate at which its brightness increases to be reduced by 10,000 lux to 50,000 lux every 24 hours. The intensity of the light produced by SCP-5091 does not decrease over distance. SCP-5091 was recovered in 1940 from Beep, Italy, where it was in the possession of known Serpent's Hand operatives. During initial containment, SCP-5091's effect was negligible, taking over 82 hours to completely destroy a 3x4x3-meter wooden block. It was contained within Site-77's safe containment wing, Focusing light on SCP-5091 was discovered to prevent its effect from spreading. Initially, the light required for containment of SCP-5091 was relatively low. 
In February of 1941, Site 77 was partially damaged by Allied bombing raids. These bombs caused SCP-1591's containment to be breached, resulting in most of the remaining portions of Site 77 being destroyed. After containment of the facility was re-established, SCP-1591 was discovered to be significantly more hazardous and reclassified as Euclid. A second containment breach resulted in Site 77 being severely damaged and loss of beep personnel. Addendum May 19th, 1941 Several documents relating to SCP-1591 were recovered by Mobile Task Force Sigma-3 bibliographers from a location inhabited by members of the Serpent's Hand. These included photographs, diagrams, and documents. One example has been included in this report. War with Elric may have been at peace for almost 568 years, but they had decided to declare war on us. The Federalists decided to assure us they would be defended, safe from the King's wrath, killed or killed. I saw little boys strung up by their backs, snapping in half as they were inched up towards the stars. Women were struck down in the streets, lanced and stabbed until they begged to die. Men who fought back were blinded, made lame, then displayed proudly in shop windows. My mother was shaved, boiled in in by a pillaging group of warriors. It was pure decimation, far beyond what had been necessary to bring vengeance to their kingdom. When the heavens saw this, they cast their eyes away, disgusted by the Elvigian carnage. The heavens cast themselves to earth. They could not stand to watch any longer, and soon they were falling every moment, first only on our lands, then on theirs, bringing an even worse carnage than what we had suffered. I could smell the burning from the northern provinces. This star is a gift to you. From heaven, in the right hand, it can be a tool to bring down senselessness, but do not forget its origin. If the hatred and carnage once again reaches light, it will cast down purity, wiping it from your lands. The stars are beautiful tonight. The stars have started to come out. I can see them through the cracks in the ceiling. It used to be that on nights like this. I'd be up in the eastern tower, watching them. I had one of those big brass telescopes that the academy uses, with the knobs on the right side and crooked stand. Grandfather had imported it from Changzhou on my 11th birthday. Only the heavens know how he was able to get a trader to land that far off. That telescope was something else. I was able to see the image of all the stars on the horizon. There were big stars, little stars, flashy stars, and the distant objects that Grandfather told me were the moons and planets. Many nights would end with me fast asleep in front of it, a celestial book in my lap and a pudgy young face resting against the viewing piece. Grandfather said that these weren't really the stars, just the images, the memories of how they looked long past. It was an honor, he said, to be able to gaze upon such a storied history. I remember one night, Grandfather took me out to the courtyard to watch the stars fall. It was beautiful. They danced and twirled through the sky, a seemingly endless supply of brilliance and color. They flashed and pulsed with light, as if they had been waiting for me to put on a show. Although I begged him for months and months, we never went out there again. Even if it was only one trip, the image of the stars frolicking swiftly throughout the cosmos had stayed ingrained in my mind. When I became head of the castle, there was no more nonsense like that. I was a grown-up. There was to be no funny business on my watch. I made sure my own son was given the greatest education in the land, 
and given the tutelage and the widest birth of material. But for the study of the cosmos, we learned with each other. He and I would crowd around that dusty old telescope, keeping close watch on the heavens with their constellations. I miss him now, more than ever. When he was lost to the family, the entire nation seemed to grieve. All my defenders were sent to search, and when he was found broken and still at the border, there were no words that could describe my grief. I was despairing, and in state I demanded retribution. The defenders took up my banner, and we attacked those we believed to have wronged us. We ravaged them with our hate, destroying every man, woman, and child. We felt justice had been done, but the heavens did not smile as he smote our enemy. When they saw us driving them from their land, and slaughtering them in greater number than had ever been seen. It was too much to bear. The heavens descended on us. First in small number, then greater. So many stars that I had once seen littering about the vast frontiers down on us, breaking everything we held. The flashing of light could be seen for many miles they fell and we found ourselves suffering a worse fate than our tormentors. I do not know why I have been spared. Perhaps to serve as a living legacy to the folly of my kingdom, or perhaps to be a witness to the end of a dynasty. When the time comes, I will go to the tower one last time, to look over the vast emptiness of the land I once ruled. The stars look beautiful tonight.